Hello and welcome to the Two Ball Brothers in a Microphone podcast. This is one of the Ball Brothers, uh, Danny Ryan. I'm here with a, at least another bald person. Tim, you are bald, correct? I am. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> and I consider you a brother, so that's that, this will work. This will work for today. Um, I wanted to uh, talk to you about um, some recent project work and in particular a product that you've been working with just to get a, maybe a little bit of a a primer and a background just to you're get, learn from you about um, how, how they're using the product. And the product's called, we're, we've been talking about, is it Coveo, Co- Covio, Covio? <laughs> well, it's spelled C-O-V-E-O, and it's a, it's a product that is being used for search, correct? That's correct. Awesome. Yep. So, so basically, uh, I, I support a client that has, um, they have a support site. They also use uh, service cloud Salesforce uh, internally uh-huh. and we and we expose that data externally at, through their uh, through their public website so there's the primary functions they use in service cloud are the uh, web cases okay so if you have a, you have a problem you can submit a case or if um, and also their articles um, knowledge base articles so, um, you know, as a as a way both internally and externally to share information both with the public as well as to share that information with internal customer service representatives. Uh, they have knowledge base articles. So within those knowledge base articles, they can be declared internal or they can be declared public. Um, cases, of course, are generally um, they can be declared internal where even the customer that um, the case is about. Um, it may not be accessible to the customer because they're internally they're you know trying to figure out a way to I guess best resolve this customer's issue. So um, basically, you've got you know data within Service Cloud that in some cases you want to share internally, and in some cases you want to share publicly. Mm-hmm. So in this case, so in this case, um, you know they brought in Coveo and their a services team to do the initial rollout to do, you know, the bulk of the work. Um, And then over time, slowly but surely, they've been, you know, transitioning some of that knowledge to us as the development team. So, of course, I'm a contractor working for uh, this particular customer and and have actually been supporting this customer for nearly three years now. So, um, so, so I'm pretty knowledgeable about a lot of what they do, but, you know, mm-hmm. still learning every day. But um, so basically in the past, we had a homegrown solution where we would bring in help content from, from some public help files that uh, were out publicly available on the web. We also had uh, we would do some searching for um, knowledge base articles. Uh huh. Uh, but this was sort of a homegrown search using the Salesforce API to retrieve the results. So there wasn't really, a, I guess, a, a unified way to really merge those, you know, the help content versus the Salesforce content. You know, there was no common uh, relevancy to to be able to, to tie those together. And, you know, we, we – didn't claim to be a, um, you know, a search expert. So we, you know, had a, a very basic um, implementation of search. So uh-huh. with with the purchase of this Coveo project um, product, then the idea was to be able to create a much more unified search experience, um, you know, because it is a, it's a professional product. A lot of Big companies use it. One of the ones I like to reference the most is Dell because mm-hmm. I'm a Dell laptop user and I often go to their support site. Um, so Dell actually uses Coveo as their support site search. So if you go to you know support.dell.com, you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Basically, it's a it's a cloud based product that is smart enough to know how to search. Uh, or to index content in Salesforce. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, other common you know formats of content it knows how to index. But then also any content that maybe it doesn't know how to index, you can actually push that content into Coveo. That way you can um, 
you know, pretty much, I guess you're kind of unlimited in the types of content that you can index. So in, in the case of uh, the company I work with, um, we're actually pushing some Lotus Notes content into Coveo as well. Okay. Um, so from a search experience, it's really two sides. Internally, their CSRs are now using Coveo to search internally for web cases or search for articles or other Salesforce artifacts that may apply to a specific you know, issue or product or, you know, whatever they need to search on based upon a customer calling in or any kind of, you know, analysis they're doing. At the same time, um, from a public standpoint, uh, a a person that might purchase this company's products, you know, there's, um, you know, for us that work with, you know, Microsoft products, if there's any kind of issues, you know, we're searching the Microsoft knowledge base to see, you know, is there an issue with SharePoint or is there Mm -hmm. an issue with Word or, you know, how can I get resolution to this problem? Well, in the same way uh, as we uh, have this support site, you know, we're supporting those users who are searching for, you know, different types of help uh, based upon, um, you know, whatever their issue may be, whether it be with a product or something like that. So, so this same Coveo search engine is basically being used for both internal uh, consumption as well as public consumption. And that's one of the interesting, you know, things about the product is you've got a lot of different filters that you can create. And, and the term they use is query pipelines. So you can create uh, different pipelines that um, have ultimately access to the same content. But through each of those different pipelines, you can you know, filter uh, the data appropriately. That way, internal content is not available publicly, and um, you know, because obviously that would be a be a concern. You don't want uh, people in the public seeing content that's only meant for internal consumption. And um, so, like the re- the results are security trimmed. Then you're able yes, to do things like that. Right. Exactly. Not yeah. not necessarily security trim based upon a you know, uh, Windows ACL, but uh, really more trend based upon, you know, this is a pipeline that's configured for external people. Okay. So let me let me not include within there or filter out things based on certain attributes that would let me know that it's an internal content only. So, okay. so it's a very, very rich framework, you know, like most other search products, you can go in and you can configure a thesaurus so that, you know, the terminology that a, a typical customer might use, you help bridge that gap between kind of common words and the words that might be, you know, used within your organization uh, that are maybe more technical in nature, or you might, um, a, an abbreviation, um, you might help, you know, help translate that so that if a customer types in a and, you know, EIN, for example, you know, that's an employee uh, uh, employee identification number. Mm-hmm. So you, you might help define that in the thesaurus that way, even though a person may not search the exact term in the content, you're helping bridge that gap by, you know, defining the, you know, the parallel uh, word within within your content. So there's pretty a pretty rich thesaurus. There's also... Um, featured results that you can define. So there's okay. certain, certain words are put in. You can tell Coveo to, to return certain results at the top of the list. So they'll have a higher ranking based upon, you know, you're creating that as a featured result. Um, and then earlier, were you talking about something like faceted search or is that part of what this is? Yeah, so there's facets um, yeah. that are definitely part of it. So like I said, the support, the Dell support UI is a, a very yeah. good example of that. So you can, you know, have facets that separate out your different kinds of content. So you could have a facet that would differentiate your help content from your articles. And even within your articles, in our case, um, in, in the long term, we'll be specifying between you know, like how to articles versus technical articles. Um so we'll different types of documentation will help narrow down, you know, through facets, mm-hmm. uh, the types of content so you can easily filter down. And in our case, we have product as a big facet, you know, so which product does this apply to? Because uh, my client has, you know, 40, 50, 60 different products that they 
um, have I, that they supply to the public. So, you know, being able to narrow down, you know, which product uh, does this help apply to is certainly a big, you know, help to get down to the results that are specific. So, you know, as a developer, what's nice about the product is it has a, a very extensive API that's well documented. They use, um, you know, just some standard documentation, but they also have like this, they use Swagger as a way to help uh, document their services and, and give examples and, you know, allow you to kind of test them there um, online. Um, it's written their their framework, their JavaScript framework, which is the basis of their standard UIs written in TypeScript. So as a developer, you can, you know, write custom components in TypeScript. And um, so it, it's really meant, you know, it really leverages more modern uh, development uh, paradigms. So you can, you know, take advantage of those and write your own you know, rich custom components to do, you know, pretty much whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. Now they've got uh, a nice, um, you know, a lot of events that are exposed that allows you to even, even within those events to customize the results that you're getting back. So in some cases, the, the data that we get back from Salesforce, we can't really give a customer uh, an internal Salesforce uh, URI, so we have to convert that to something that's uh, accessible publicly, so we can, you know, capture that data and, and change things as we need to. Mm-hmm. In our case, we like to do a lot of logging, so we know, you know, what our customers looking at. Even though Covey offers a lot of this on the server side, we like to track some of this even within our own application. Um, and so, if there's an error, for example. You know, we would log that and be able to see that through our own logs and know that, uh, you know, there might be a potential issue. Um, also, you know, just as a browser-based application, you can leverage CSS to, you know, customize the look and feel nice. of the search UI. So, you know, whether it be, you know, the colors that you're trying to achieve or whether, you know, be moving things around on the screen, you can, uh, all that's easily available, you know, through standard you know, web techniques. So. Very nice. Is any of this um, content, is it uh, like documents, like file-based content that you have at searching at all? Or is that a part of this? Uh, the help files are yeah. file, you know, are file. The file-based. File-based content. Okay. So, um, so it's searching, searching those. Um, you know, the, uh, most of the content, I guess, is coming out of Service Cloud. Okay. And then do you know if... Um, I took t- uh, took a quick look on their website before we we talked, and I saw there was um, you can use it with like Sitecore, which is that's come up. Um, we, we had some projects that involve that, but you know if there's anything that's, um, I guess I saw Dynamics, but I wasn't sure if there's anything uh, uh, SharePoint related or Office 365. Have you heard anything about that at all? We haven't we haven't dealt with any interfaces to SharePoint, so okay. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. But- yeah. So our primary, you know, back end is, is Salesforce. Yeah. So that's, um, I'm just asking to make, to see if you can use it for other projects. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can. I yeah. think, you know, like most big companies yeah. like this, they provide, yeah. uh, different, um, uh, you know, different ways to read that content. Um, you know, obviously the more sources like SharePoint and like Salesforce, they can, uh, support the more likely, you know, a company would, uh, choose to use the product so uh yeah i'm sure they continue to evolve over time all these different uh interfaces but like i said the nice part is if if it doesn't support your particular interface you can push that content nice uh, into it so it's uh, pretty much i guess unlimited as to you know the different types of sources that you can you can support so that you know this it's got a nice looking ui um you know it's uses kind of your standard uh standard, you know, faceted UIs that search UIs that most companies have today. So it's, uh, um, so far I've, I've enjoyed working with it, you know, being able to, uh, you know, hook into the different events and be able to accomplish, you know, cause m- most, most companies, and, and I can't really speak for others besides Scoveo. I mean, you know, they're obviously going to give you a dog and pony show that shows you, you know, some real basic functionality, but uh-huh. what, uh, as most developers know, the real key to using a product is how does it handle the exception cases? Yep. Does it does it give you that flexibility to to 
to handle the exceptions in an acceptable way. For example, in one of the sites, you know, we don't want to show all the different products as facets. We really just want to show a subset of those uh, products. So, but we still want the content associated to the facets that we don't show. So if a customer doesn't choose a facet, then they'll still just see, they'll see all the content. But uh-huh. if they if they do choose the facet, then, um, you know, then we would limit it down. So we, so what we do is, you know, there's a, a mechanism to, you know, only show certain facets. Um, so that's kind of one of the, you know, simple exception cases, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, each of these objects is very customizable. There's properties that you can specify on an HTML attribute, you know, the standard data dash, property in HTML that you can use that's meaningful to, uh, you know, Coveo, but your browser basically ignores it. So Coveo right. can read those properties and um, basically uh, adjust your interface, you know, the, the behavior of your interface based upon, you know, what the property value that you've passed in. So it's, uh, you know, a nice, uh, nice way to be able to, you know, to code. Very nice. Both, both you know, through the HTML interface as well as through the JavaScript and through the APIs. Um, so so far, it's uh, you know been been a a good experience. You know, over time, we'll continue to transition more and more of the responsibility to over to our team from the services, uh, Coveo services team. But um, you know, the Coveo services team, you know, has has done a good job of uh, you know handling all the exceptions that we've asked them to handle and, and, you know, transition that over to our team. So, great. so, so far it's been a, been a good experience. So. Great. Well, I appreciate you, uh, you sharing your experiences here and, um, and uh, for continuing the great job on the project for three years. Um, I don't know how much longer you'll be on the project, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm looking but... <laughs> towards I'm taking this. This is going to be my retirement project. So <laughs> I think in another 12 years and, you know, maybe, maybe we're there. So, I hear you. Well, thanks for all your hard work. Have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody, for listening, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.